Hi and welcome. Today we're going to talk about sixth generation fighter aircraft. Now uh, you've seen stealth fighter aircraft, fifth generation aircraft like the F-22 Raptor, which was the first in-service stealth fighter in the world. And then of course the um, JSF, Joint Strike Fighter or the F-35. Recently also the Chinese with the J-20 uh, Mighty Dragon have launched a production version of a fifth generation stealth fighter. The Russians have been working on the Su-57 project even though very small numbers of that fighter actually exist and over time uh, they are also wanting to develop the Su-75 Checkmate fighter which is still on the drawing board and exists as a mock-up but hasn't yet taken to the skies. But clearly, fifth generation fighters are all over, and now uh, the next round of countries, middle powers, countries like Turkey with the Khan fighter, and countries like South Korea with the Bore fighter, which starts life off as a four and a half generation aircraft and will eventually get some capabilities that will bring it close to being a fifth generation fighter. But these countries are also getting in to uh, the, the development of fifth generation fighters. So what then is sixth generation and what features will make up sixth generation fighters? Well, first of all, this kind of classification between these generations of fighters is a little arbitrary. And um, of course, because it's arbitrary, people have then come up with things like fourth generation and 4.5 generation and 4.5 plus plus generation. Uh, and so, like I said, this is not purely scientific. But in general, with each new generation of fighter, there are some key features that distinguish it from a previous generation fighters. And generally, it's not just one distinguishing characteristic, it's more than one. So let's think about sixth generation fighters with that lens. What unique, new, distinguishing characteristics will these fighters have over and above the aircraft that exist today? Well, first off, there is no operational sixth generation fighter in service today, but there are many programs, for example, NGAD, Next Generation Air Dominance in the United States, and also in Europe, there are sixth generation fighter uh, efforts at play, and one hears that there are similar efforts going on in China, even though not much is known, and any prototypes uh, that are rumored only exist mainly as fan art as far as the open source community is concerned. But we can rest assured that if the United States is developing the NGAD and other types of sixth generation fighters, let's say for the Navy, then China will also either soon catch up or probably also has something in development. So what defining characteristics will apply to this new class of fighter aircraft and of aircraft in general, military aircraft in general. Well, the first is going to be the use of artificial intelligence and autonomy. While some of this has been implemented individually in drones and in computer vision systems on board drones and in some uh, employment of weapons in sort of restricted ways, with the sixth generation aircraft, this will really become mainstream and this will be implemented at scale. Not only will there be immense use of artificial intelligence to fuse signal and sensor inputs to create a common operating picture for the pilot, but this autonomy will also exist in many loyal wingmen, many drones that operate in concert with a manned sixth generation fighter. Many of these sixth generation fighters will also be optionally manned. So you can essentially fly them with a pilot or without a pilot, just with AI. They'll be able to act as a hub in the air, as a network hotspot that then connects up many of these other loyal wingmen fighters and they can in concert go out and conduct missions. And it's not just about having multiple aircraft to deliver, let's say, the same types of payloads. It's really around an entire wolf pack, if you will, that uses autonomy where individual aircraft, individual drones or manned aircraft fulfill certain functions. And there's a complex orchestration between them. So rather than using artificial intelligence only within the aircraft, artificial intelligence and autonomy will be optimized at that group or swarm level. 
And that's going to be one of the distinguishing uh, elements that will take the use of artificial intelligence to the next level and will also be unique to sixth generation fighters. But now lo let's look at another area, which is weapon systems. Now, missiles, uh, particularly air-to-air -air missiles, have become more and more complex with multiple seekers, longer ranges, and there's a competition afoot now between the US and China to quote-unquote outstick each other, meaning who has the longer stick, who has the missile with the longest range. The PL-15 by the Chinese, uh, which has been recently deployed, seems to be the most long-range missile, but the next series of the uh, AIM, AIM series of missiles within the uh, US Air Force is also being developed and will soon come online. And then there's longer range missiles like the PLXX that's being uh, built in China. The Russians are also working on long range missiles. But aside from the range, these are still conventional missiles. They might use different types of engines. Uh, some might use ramjets, some might use uh, dual motors, but event, you know, if you think about it, in general terms, they're still the same technology. They're an air-to-air -air missile. But where sixth generation fighters will take this beyond the, the current state of the art is by employing directed energy weapons or lasers. And directed energy weapons might actually be both lasers and microwaves. We'll see how that plays out. But the idea is that you can transform energy into unlimited ammunition. And you can also have a very inexpensive way of downing, let's say, a, a missile or a drone or any kind of a ground target, theoretically, if you can achieve those energies, using just uh, a, you know, a directed beam of energy that's precisely focused on one target for long enough such that that energy generates heat and destroys, disrupts, melts, otherwise kills the target in some way. Now, there's a lot of work that's been done over the last few decades with laser systems, but making them compact, solving the energy problem, then also solving the aiming problem of being able to precisely aim a beam of light at long ranges through disturbances in the atmosphere and all, uh, all types of other noise that exists that get, that's getting in your way in terms of you being able to focus that beam while you're moving at a very high rate of speed, while a target is moving at a very high rate of speed, you can easily see those are all significant challenges. But those challenges will probably soon be overcome. And we will see directed energy weapons, maybe initially for defensive purposes, for example, being able to take out the optics of an infrared missile that's uh, coming at you, or being able to take out a small drone. But as technology progresses, more and more power will be available to these directed energy weapons at smaller scales so that they'll fit inside an aircraft. And eventually we'll get to essentially using lasers as weapons uh, for a few cents, uh, you will be able to uh, carry out a kinetic kill, which today is not possible with physical mechanical systems, uh, ballistic systems, conventional missiles, etc. So that's the second technology, which will be a distinguishing characteristic of sixth generation aircraft. But it doesn't stop there. Now, also in propulsion, there are adaptive cycle engines, which is a new form of engine technology for sixth generation aircraft. Conventionally, uh, engines are designed for a certain flight envelope, for certain speeds, and they're optimized physically such that the rate of flow of air and how that's compressed, those are all optimized for a certain Mach number or a, you know, subsonic speed. And so an aircraft that's built for very high speeds is generally not going to perform well at low rates of speeds, uh, if, it, if it can even achieve low rates of speed. So something like the Blackbird, the SR-71, it was, you know, Mach 3 plus aircraft. You don't fly that at subsonic speeds. That's not when it's optimal. That's not when the engines are at full efficiency. It's designed to fly at a very high rate of speed. Similarly, if you design an aircraft to be super maneuverable at, let's say, just slightly under Mach 1, if you fly that type of aircraft at Mach 2 plus, it's going to consume a lot of fuel very, very quickly because the engine is not optimized for that type of performance for a long period of time. And the reason behind all of this is because engines are generally attuned to a certain place in that 
speed range in that flight envelope. But with adaptive engine technologies, we'll be able to have engines that are sophisticated enough to literally adapt their mechanicals, to adapt their shape, to adapt the way in which their intakes operate, to become essentially more than one engine, depending on where the aircraft uh, is in that flight regime, the engine will adapt itself to optimize its internal componentry, its internal structure, to more effectively cater to that performance requirement. And this means longer range, this means a much wider flight envelope, this means an aircraft that can uh, perform really well at slow speeds, it can perform really well at high speeds. Uh, so this is sort of what uh, the swing wing was, you know, the, the type of wing that was used in the um, F-111 or the F-14, the MiG-27, that type of uh, adaptive wing technology now coming to engines, and that's a really big deal. So that's the third technology that distinguishes uh, the sixth generation aircraft from what exists conventionally. And finally, I'll talk about a one more piece of technology, and that is a much better kind of stealth. Uh, we talk about stealth as, as sort of a binary thing. It's uh, either you're stealthy or you're not stealthy. But in reality, we know that radar returns from an aircraft will exist no matter what. Uh, no matter how stealthy you make an aircraft, it's not entirely invisible. And then the question is, invisible to what? So traditionally, we talk about being invisible to, to radars, particularly the types of frequencies that can target an aircraft. And that's really the area of the spectrum that current fifth generation aircraft seek to optimize and seek to reduce their returns in, in that spectrum so that they can't be easily targeted with conventional means. But you can see them, you can physically see them. Uh, if they emit a plume, you can see that plume. If they create heat from their engine, you can see that heat. And of course, uh, fifth generation aircraft do try to protect their uh, exhausts and, and uh, try to reduce their heat signatures, but they still do emit a heat signature. So this idea of stealth is uh, a limited concept, and it's not something that works in absolutes. So there's always room to improve this. And when you think about improving stealth, you have to think about, again, the spectrum. There's visible light, there's radio emissions, there's all sorts of radar returns that are, let's say, higher frequency, lower frequency returns, depending on the type of radar. And across this entire spectrum, you want to minimize an aircraft signature. You want it to be visually difficult to detect. You want to be able to uh, have passive detection technologies on the aircraft so that it doesn't emit uh, radiation uh, signals that can be picked up uh, and then give away the location of the aircraft. And you also want the materials used in the aircraft, the shaping of the aircraft to be such that it minimizes radar returns across a broad set of frequencies. Now, this type of all spectrum, all aspect stealth is uncommon even in today's fighter aircraft. Uh, the F-117, uh, as far back as the conflict in Europe uh, with Serbia and Bosnia, uh, one of those aircraft was shot down with a Serbian missile. And of course, we know that what we call stealthy aircraft are not invisible, they're just low signature. So in, in the sixth generation aircraft design, there'll be a much greater focus, and this is a very, very complex topic because it's not just about the physical shape of the aircraft. Yes, that too. But it's also about the electronics on board the aircraft. It's also about the heat signatures of the engine. It's also about the visual signature of the aircraft. And all of these things being optimized at one time is non-trivial, but that's the type of uh, advancement in low observability, and uh, you know this in sort of increased idea of all aspect multi-spectrum uh, stealth that will take place at sixth generation aircraft. So these are at least a few of the technologies. There's going to be a lot more, uh, and in particular through the use of artificial intelligence, I tried to paint one or two pictures of what the future might look like. But really, AI will be so embedded in almost every 
uh, system within the aircraft, at the aircraft level, at the information fusion level, the human machine interface level, at the swarm level, that there's going to be many, many scenarios that are entirely unique that will be created with sixth generation aircraft that, that in a short video like this I haven't been able to capture. But hopefully this gives you some idea of where we're going in military aviation technology with uh, this leap from fifth generation to the sixth generation. Uh, I'm extremely interested in seeing how many of these things will materialize. I hope you are too and let's watch this trend together.